Hello and welcome to another Tunisian crochet pattern tutorial. If this is your first time, thank you very much for stopping by. My name is Neka and I make stitch and pattern crochet and Tunisian crochet tutorials. So if this is of your interest, please consider subscribing, sharing this video, liking and of course let me know in the comments section um, how you found this tutorial. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The watermelon cowl pattern is easy beginner friendly pattern. Uh, it is available in three sizes, which is junior, uh, medium, which is small adult and large adult. Uh, for this pattern, you will need worsted weight yarn. I in particular used uh, Drops M, which is very nice yarn, uh, which has got a slight halo because of its alpaca content. It has got also polyamide and wool in it, so it's very nice blend. Um, this I picked this yarn because it's quite warm. It's very suitable for cold winter days, and also because there is very generous yardage for the weights that we get. So you will get a hundred and fifty meters for fifty gram um, yarn ball or yarn donut, which is um, hundred and sixty four yards. And you will need um, two colors, um, or if you prefer, you can make the pattern in one color also. So today I'm going to be using this light gray color and I will alternate it with the red that I used for the original pattern. So uh, you will also need six millimeter or J size 10 um, Tunisian crochet hook with a small extension. So we would need about um, 10 to 20 inches extension. The pattern is worked flat. So we will work in a rectangle and we will sew the edges at the end to give it the tubular shape. So the stitch pattern is worked for multiples of two. So in case you would like to extend in case you would like to extend your cowl, make it larger or even make it smaller, you need to add multiples of two or subtract multiples of two. The cowl consists of several sections. So we've got the first ed the edge at the bottom, which is made in Tunisian simple stitch. Then we have a honeycomb section where we alternate Tunisian simple and Tunisian pearl stitch. Then we've got another small section of Tunisian simple stitch. Then you've got this um, beautiful stitch pattern where we work Tunisian cross stitch and we alternate this with rows of Tunisian knit stitch. And then we repeat a few rows of Tunisian simple stitch, honeycomb section and the top edge. So the pattern is quite repetitive and it allows you to practice your stitches and get that uh, much needed mus muscle memory. I will be today I will be making a small swatch so I will not be chaining as per the pattern so in pattern you have chain of 70 80 and 96 we will not be doing that because um, this tutorial will be very long so what I'm going to do I'm going to demonstrate on a small swatch the basic stitches and techniques and then you can go and work on the pattern in your time we will start this project with a slip knot We insert the hook into the loop created by the slip knot, tighten it, and then we will chain. So as I mentioned, we will need even number of chains. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, and two, and I think that should be enough for my small swatch to demonstrate. So then we will work a foundation row of Tunisian crochet. For that foundation row of Tunisian crochet, we will be working into the back bumps of the chain stitches. Okay, so what you need to do, you need to turn your chain around and work into the back bump. So we insert the hook from front to back, yarn over and pull up a loop. 
and we will repeat this for each of the chains that we created. return pass so in Tunisian crochet you always work um, your rows in two steps in forward pass where you increase the number of loops on your hook and then return pass where you work this loop off the hook until you are left with one last loop and this loop will be the first loop of the consecutive row so let's see how we do that uh, for most of your projects you will work the standard return pass which is a chain one or yarn over pull through one and then we yarn over pull through two and we will repeat yarn over pull through two all the way to the end of your row once when we are at the end we will work another row of Tunisian simple stitch okay so Tunisian simple stitch is worked from right to left if you are right-handed so you insert the hook from right to left under the front vertical bar you yarn over and pull up a loop so again you insert the hook from right to left under the front vertical bar yarn over and pull up a loop and you will repeat this for each stitch of your sample right up to the last stitch and the last stitch which is also known as edge stitch or end stitch is worked slightly differently so we are almost there got one more of the regular Tunisian simple stitches and now we are getting to the last stitch so with the last stitch we'll be creating a nice neat edge that is then easy to sew so we will need to turn the fabric towards ourselves and there you can see two strands of yarn one is on the right one is on the left so the last stitch will be worked under both of these so you insert the hook under both of these strands of yarn or bars yarn over and pull up a loop and that's your last stitch or end stitch of your row now we will repeat the standard return pass which is chain one and yarn over pull through two all the way to the end okay so once we finished row number two we move on to row number three which is another row of Tunisian simple stitch. I spare the pattern, so I will skip the, another row because I already showed you, I already demonstrated how to do the Tunisian simple stitch. So if you would like, pause the video, make your row number three and come back um, for row number four. So for row number three, four, this is where we start working the honeycomb stitch pattern. And this consists of one Tunisian simple and one Tunisian pearl into the next stitch and then again Tunisian simple in the next stitch all the way to the end so we'll be working two stitches one is Tunisian simple so we know this one already and Tunisian pearl so we for Tunisian pearl stitch we need to bring the fabric forward in front of the hook insert the hook into the stitch from right to left yarn over the hook and pull up a loop and this creates a tiny little bump on this on the yarn which is um, similar to pearl stitch in knitting so again we would work Tunisian simple into the next stitch and Tunisian pearl into the following stitch so we'll bring the yarn forward insert the hook from right to left yarn over and pull up a loop and Tunisian simple, Tunisian pearl, 
and we will be alternating Tunisian simple and Tunisian pearl stitch to the last stitch where we work and stitch. <music> stitch is worked under the two bars of the last stitch yarn over and pull up a loop followed by standard return pass so now we are at the beginning of the next row which is row number five so to create the honeycomb stitch or stitch pattern, we now need to um, swap the stitches the other way around. So while we started the previous row with Tunisian simple, we will now work Tunisian pearl into this stitch. And where we had Tunisian pearl stitch, we will work Tunisian simple into this one. So we will start row number five with Tunisian pearl, work Tunisian simple, then Tunisian pearl, and Tunisian simple, all the way to the end of the row. And we finish the row with the end stitch, followed by standard return pass. So we worked uh, row number four and five, which started to create uh, the honeycomb stitch pattern. The pattern then um, calls for repeating the rows number four and five two more times with changing your yarn color on the return pass of the last repeat, which will be the row number nine. So how we change the color. So I'm not going to repeat the row, row, um, rows number four and five for two more times because I already demonstrated how to make this. I'm going to go right into changing the color and then working another row of Tunisian simple stitch. The pattern calls for two rows, but um, for the time constraints, I'm only going to uh, demonstrate one row. So what we need to do on the, when we change colors, we only work the stitches to last two loops. So once we have the last two loops of the return pass on the hook, we will then bring a new color. We will yarn over with the new color and pull through the last two loops. And this gives us the first stitch of the new row in the new color, the alternating color. Okay, as you can see, if we worked uh, the very last stitch in the red color, then the next row, which should be in a different color, would start with red and wouldn't look very nice. So that's why we yarn over with over the last two loops with the new color. So now we are on row number 10, which is a row of Tunisian simple stitch. And so is the row number 11 with changing color going into row number 12. So what I'm going to do, I'm only going to demonstrate one row of Tunisian simple stitch in the alternating color. And on the return pass, I will then change back to red. This pattern is really customizable in terms of the size. So if you would like to have the cowl taller, you can add some rows to any of the stitch pattern section. So you can add some extra row of Tunisian simple stitch to this section, or you can add multiples of two rows to your honeycomb sections. So you have two honeycomb sections in the cowl, one at the bottom, one at the top. So if you are enlarging this, please remember to add multiple of two rows into each section to maintain the symmetrical um, look of the pattern. So now we are getting to the end of the row 
we, and we have last two loops on our hook we will change back to red so got last two loops on the hook we yarn over pull through two with the red so now if we are going to get go, go into the central section central stitch pattern which consists of two Tunisian um, knit stitch rows alternated with Tunisian cross stitches so with Tunisian knit stitch we work from front to back so we enter the hook from front to back between the front and back vertical bars of the stitch we yarn over and pull up a loop and then we go into the next one work between the front and back vertical bar from front to back yarn over and pull up a loop and as the name says this stitch resembles the stockinette stitch in knitting or the knit stitch okay so once once we get to the end of the row similarly to the previous rows we will work end stitch and standard written pass So we just completed our first row of Tunisian knit stitch. We will work another row of Tunisian knit stitch. two rows of Tunisian knit stitch we're now going to be working one row of cross stitch so cross stitches are worked over multiple of two stitches so we will need as we started with even number of stitches this will work just perfectly for the stitch pattern so what we need to do we need to skip the first stitch and work Tunisian simple stitch into the second stitch from hook and then we will go to the first stitch that we skipped and worked Tunisian simple stitch there. As you can see, this crossed the uh, strands of yarn that were in the row below. So again, we will skip the next stitch, we will work Tunisian simple into the following stitch, and then we return back to the skipped stitch and work Tunisian simple stitch there. And we'll repeat this for the rest of the row. this um, stitch combination two more times so you will work two rows of Tunisian knit stitch followed by one row of Tunisian cross stitch you repeat uh, two times so you will get up to the um, row number 20 um, and at the end of the row number 20 you will change um, color again to your alternate in color and you will work two rows of Tunisian simple stitch which is row number 21 and 22 at the end of row number 22 on your return pass you will change back to um, your original color and work another section or uh, another honeycomb section so you will repeat rows number four to nine after repeating the second honeycomb section uh, this would be rows 23 to 28 you will again work two rows of Tunisian simple stitch and then you will work your bind off so that's what I'm going to show you how to bind off your project so 
uh, we will work um, Tunisian simple stitch bind all. So you will go into the stitch as if you were working Tunisian simple stitch. You would yarn over, pull up a loop, but you will pull this loop through the loop that is already on the hook. So you only have one loop left. You will work this for all the remaining stitches in your row. And this create nice neat edge which is similar to the bottom edge that we started with chains. Okay, once we are at the end, we'll pull through the last stitch, we'll cut the yarn, pull it through the last loop and that's it. You will then Place your project the wrong side down. You will fold it, fold the edges, and you will use your preferred method of joining the edges. So the one method which I recommend, which is very neat, is using the locking matrix stitch, where we work through the top loops of the, the edge on both sides thank you very much for watching i hope you found this tutorial useful if you did that give it a like share subscribe and i will see you in the next video bye bye